Hey everyone, welcome to the Silicon Alley Podcast. I'm William Glass, CEO and co-founder of Ostrich, a financial platform that is focused on upskilling your finances through social accountability and group challenges the same way the fitness industry works in terms of providing that extra accountability and focusing on the emotional side of money. Sign up at getostrich.com to be a part of the beta. And of course, I am your host of the Silicon Alley Podcast. And on today's episode, I'm really excited to share with you a conversation that I had with Sarah Lee. Now, Sarah, I met over in Thailand where I was doing a Fulbright scholarship and she was part of the Fulbright Thailand portion of the program. And Sarah has a very unique story. Sarah went to school over in Canada and then came back to Thailand where she then joined the Fulbright program where I met her. From there, she ended up in corporate Thailand where she was heading a department, but then one day was was fired and turned that potentially very bad situation into a great opportunity where she now is a YouTuber who has built a very successful following as well as built a coaching business where she's taken her expertise and language and has turned that into a business. So I hope that you enjoy my conversation with Sarah Lee. So Sarah, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, give me the, the kind of overview of who, of who you are and what you do, and we'll go from there. Yeah, sure. So I, my name is Sarah. Uh, I am a native Thai speaker. I was born and raised in Bangkok. Uh, until I was 25, I left Bangkok to pursue my master's in Canada, in Vancouver. Uh, not really. It's actually Victoria, but I live mostly in Vancouver. Yeah, because I like the city better. <laughs> and um, I I moved back to Bangkok in 2013, where I started working for Fulbright Thailand, where I met you. <laughs> and I lived a job at Fulbright Thailand in 2000. Let me count. <laughs> 2017 or 18. Yeah, and I moved on to another organization. Yeah. And I was actually like looking into doing something on my own for a while because I didn't really like, you know, full time job, like nine to five kind of thing. So I was looking for, you know, into options, but I was scared to, you know, start anything of my own. Um, and I enjoyed the security, the stability that I know, you know, a full time job offers, right, back then. So until 2000, um 19 september yeah september 2019 i i got fired from the job yeah Oof. so i had no i had no choice oh well i actually had like you know some options to go back to the corporate world um but i just feel like it's probably time for me to to do something on my own um because i feel that sometimes people didn't really appreciate my work and my efforts when I gave, you know, like one a hundred percent. Sometimes I think if I do something on my own, even though I fail, at least I learned something of it and kind of like keep moving forward and, you know, trying to be better. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that makes sense. So what was that? What was it like? I mean, you, you had, uh, you know, this, this nice corporate job and then, all of a sudden to lose it and then make that decision to, to go into entrepreneurship. What was that like? Well, it was scary at first because the full-time job paid me really well. I was really feeling comfortable in the bubble for, for a little while. And when it got fired, it's like my whole world collapsed. And I felt that, okay, at the end of the month, now I had to figure out how I'm going to pay the bills and stuff, right? Um, The thing is, yeah, the thing is I was pretty lucky because I decided to pursue a lawsuit against them and we settled for some amount of money. And so I kind of lived off that money for for a while. Um, But at the same time, because, yeah, I, I also teach, like I teach a lot of stuff. Like I teach Thai, the language. I teach English and I teach piano. So I'm pretty fortunate that I have these, you know, language and music skills that I can just kind of make money from them for a while. <laughs> you know, um, awesome. and I got that. That's the reason I got into got into YouTube. The um, how it started was when I was super stressed with the lawsuit and I decided to just teach for fun. 
on、uh, Facebook. So I was teaching English to Thai students, just like enjoying to you know give back to the community as much as I could. And then one day, I I was doing that for two months. And one day,、um, one of my Fubrai friends, I think you know her, Ned, Siana. Yeah, I know Ned. Yeah, yeah.、You、know her? Yeah. So, so she says something like, "We want Thai with Sarah too," you know. <laughs> and I know that she's still learning Thai and stuff, right? So that's how I started、uh, teaching Thai, and I call it the same way I call the English teaching. So I call English teaching English with Sarah. So I just changed the word English to Thai with Sarah. So that's how was how it started. And there are there were few people in my community to kind of request me to teach Thai because they know that I do it for free, right? So <laughs>、yeah. I might as well just do that for Thai and English. Yeah, and then and then、um, I got to meet another you like a YouTuber who had like one million subscribers. And I was talking to him about how I should do it on YouTube or not, or like sell an online course.、Uh, it was really funny because I was actually looking into options to do that, and I actually、okay. contacted a marketing company. But at some, I don't know for some reason they turned me down. It's really funny because usually the client gets to turn the turn them down, right? Not the other way around. <laughs> but I mean, they yeah for some reason they said it couldn't work with me. And so I took the opportunity to maybe just get on YouTube first because、yeah. that YouTuber, he said that I might need some exposure, you know, because I was nobody back then, like no one really know me, right? So、uh, maybe it would be better for me to like you know get on YouTube and kind of like exploring what it's like, you know, to monetize on YouTube first. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome, yeah. yeah. So that's that's really cool that you're able to find someone that has has had a lot of success on YouTube and help you kind of walk through that. So is does he? Do you、yeah. still keep in contact? Has he kind of helped you guide you through that process of building up your yeah? Your yeah, we we are friends, and he has been helping me with a lot of stuff about like microphone problem, and audio, <laughs> and stuff like that.、Uh, he gave me like valuable advice, and yeah. But、um, he started off having like maybe like a hundred or a thousand subscribers, and now he's hitting one point two eight million something. Yeah. So、wow. he said anything. So I actually talked to him a lot about how sh- I should create content. You know, like which topics that I should create content around.、Um, and then he said something like I shouldn't copy my competitors because I was actually told by. Some people to watch my competitors' videos and create content around it, kind of like make yourself to be pop, like to pop up in the suggested video area or section. Yeah. But then、um, my YouTuber friend said that I shouldn't do that because that's not me, and people watch me because I'm being me. You know. Yeah. I he said I can do that for a while, but at some point I'll I'm not gonna enjoy it, and when I don't enjoy, people can see that. That you not enjoy doing it. So when I, when you do something out of your passion, and you do it because you enjoy doing it, people can sense it and can feel it. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. I think you're spot on, and、yeah. that authenticity is so important. And I remember, like, you're one of the people that within Fulbright Thailand that really stuck out to me because you were authentically yourself、mm-hmm. all the time, and I loved that about about you. So I'm really I'm really glad that. That you got that advice, and you know, from what I've seen and like、mm-hmm. watching videos, like it really does feel like like I'm I'm with the real Sarah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. That that's what that's what my audience、uh, said to me as well. That what they see is actually like not really just lessons, but like a reality show <laughs> somehow <laughs> too. Yeah, it's, gonna it's get、great. to see me being myself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're you're not just educating because anyone can educate and tell you the basics of language. But what makes it interesting is you and your story and your perspective and how you tie it in. And like, I like I like the fact that you that you're very open about the conversations that you're having in real life and bring those in. And like,、yeah. like,、um, mm. like especially like the conversations around like dating in Thailand and like if you're an expat and like how <laughs> how does that work? Because that's something that is. 
is I, like, you're not going to find that in a textbook. Like no one's going to tell you that, but that's what people really want to know uh, in real life. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome. So I really love that, uh, that you've gone that route. Is that your favorite video? Uh, that's, it's one of them. Yeah, it's up there. <laughs> I think it's up there. It's, uh, it's a good one. People love that topic a lot. Yeah, yeah. I just like the topic picking that you've done. So what was that process? So you, you um, now all of a sudden, you know, need, need to find another job. You are, enjoy teaching and uh, are, are doing this on Facebook for free. Ned reaches out and says, like, we want Ty with Sarah. So what, uh, how did you go from that to actually okay. starting the YouTube channel and building your brand and business? Well, from scratch, basically, right? I knew nothing about YouTube and I knew nothing about creating content. So if you get to watch my like previous videos, those were like um, very basic without music background, nothing. And I still say something like, oh, please subscribe, hit the bell icon, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> um, just to get people to like, subscribe, please. But nowadays, like, I don't really say that anymore. Like at the beginning of the video, I just jump into a topic. But I used to say that at the end or some, put, sometimes put caption on. Um, so I knew nothing about it. And I just pretty much uh, apply the method of, what's it called? It's like trial and error. Yeah. Try, error, yeah. Try and error method. Yeah. So like I, I did that and I just try like, you know, which topic people love or this one, like maybe this video is not doing so well. It gets like, you know, so low views. Like, you know, I'm trying to like kind of analyze the data myself and I actually have someone to help me with the content, but she's been really busy lately and she's not kind of, you know, she's not really involved anymore. But uh, during the first couple, four, four or five months, yeah, she was with me. And basically we just like met every week, like once a week and then exchange ideas and all that. But she didn't yeah. want to be on camera. Um, so okay. it was just me talking. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty much like you just try what works and go from there. That's awesome. That's awesome. So have, so have you always been interested in teaching and educating because ultimately that that's that's the business right is that you've got these skills you uh yeah. you know, speak multiple languages piano like talk to me a little bit about about that well my absolute my absolute goal like back then i had no idea i didn't know i have no directions whatsoever before i knew for a fact that i just want to you know make passive income or get into that somehow but I still had no idea how mm -hmm. to do that. And then one day before, I think this happened before I got on YouTube, I was actually writing a novel. It's about like uh, dating as well and relationship. It's like a chick lit, you know, fiction kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then I got into YouTube, but so that's why I need to put that on hold last year. So I was, I was okay. planning to write that. And hopefully it will become uh, an international hit and it will pay me <laughs> off later. Yeah. So once I get into, once um, everything on YouTube is stable and once I finish the project in San Francisco, I'm going to San Francisco next month. Once I get all everything done, I will get back on track for writing that novel again to resume writing that because that's my, that's my, my, my other passion is to, to write. Yeah. Um, and I, awesome. I wrote that in English. Yeah. That's awesome. That's incredible. That's incredible. So writing a novel as well as building up this business, YouTube business yeah. and wanting to get that in a place where you've got some good passive income. What yeah, yeah. have you always been entrepreneurial in nature? Or is that something that, that, um, was kind of just thrust upon you when you were no longer with the, the company and you had all this free time? Like what, have, have you always had that kind of desire and drive? Um, I actually start to have this entrepreneurial, uh, <laughs> you know, spirit when I hit maybe 31 or 32. Okay. 
because I felt like this is not fun going to work, make this much money, and although I had you know the best time at Fulbright, it was an an NGO and I didn't really make much there. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I believe in law of attraction and manifestations, and I believe that if I'm actually passionate, you know, about doing something and not worry so much about how money's you know money's gonna come, I think. At some point or somehow, money will come to my life. But this is probably not what I want to do for the rest of my life, like working at Fubara Thailand. Okay, like sure. I mean, it's yeah. great experience, but I don't own it. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. So I feel like okay, I got to do something about it. But how I'm gonna do it with my skills that I have? Okay, teaching language, uh, intercultural communication skills, stuff like that. How can I build my business? But still, it's more like active income. I still need to trade, you know, uh, time with money, right? And I have only 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I was trying to look into ways to do it, and I got into an MLM business, uh, New Skin, and it was a great experience. But I figured out it wasn't for me. Sure, I didn't yeah. enjoy. It. I didn't enjoy it. But at the same time, I learned some business skills. I learned how to, you know, handle with rejections because people are gonna say no all the time, right? For this kind of business, you know. Um, so yeah, that that's. I think I've learned a lot from M M business, but at the same time, there's like I felt there gonna be something else for me. It cannot be just that. That's not the only way to make passive income, and I was kind of like. Trying to look into options and exploring my options while I still keep a job at Food by Thailand, right? Um, and I, honestly, I had no directions, and I got a little depressed with my life because I didn't enjoy doing it uh, as much as I enjoy my time with Food by. I feel like I could do much more, you know, with sure, my yeah. skills, and so like. That's why I was looking for a new job, and then I got a new job again. Everything went well. I really enjoy, you know, uh, heading the department and all that. And I got fired, and I'm like, all right, maybe it's time, you know, to come up with something. So I'm a kind of person who always does more than a hundred percent, right? And sometimes when I do that with like a corporate job. They don't think it's a good idea because I do much more than expected, and they're not gonna pay me more. <laughs> you know, yeah, they're, exactly. they're sometimes they appreciate that, but they're not gonna pay me more, or yeah. I'm not gonna enjoy the benefits of whatever profits that they are entitled, right? So, I feel that um, I'm a kind of person who love to, you know, anything that's challenging, and so. Doing this on my own is challenging every month. And did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, Wait, you're spot on. I'm not sure. Come on, like da 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 da. Um, okay, so what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, entrepreneurial nature. If it's if it's just something that okay. you always yeah, have. yeah. So I love anything that is challenging. Anything that's like simple, complete a task. No need to figure out or come up with any more solutions anymore. Those bore me a lot, and so yeah, I think I'm like that all the time. Even with school too, some subjects that I fell back then it was because it was boring, and I didn't feel like I enjoyed it. But it was like math or language or art. I enjoyed those subjects a lot. Yeah. Gotcha. No, that's cool. It it makes sense. It's like having that that you know desire to own something, and if you're going to work harder, and that's exactly for me why entrepreneurship I think is so powerful. Because if you're going to work harder than someone else, or you're going to give more than a hundred percent, and you're not, but you're not going to get compensated appropriately for that. Really, only entrepreneurship, and you know, there's a few other careers that that will allow you to, you know. I see right. more more benefit from the extra effort that you're putting in. So I love that. I love that. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So what's been your experience as a 
business owner, YouTube creator, content creator, and coach? Well, actually, my public speaking skills back then wasn't that great. Um, I was having this so-called, what's it called, stage fright, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, when I got on Facebook first time teaching, I was shaking, I think. My voice was shaking a little bit. I think... I have learned a lot from this because all I had was fears. Fear of making mistakes, fear of embarrassing myself, fear of like maybe mispronounce some word in English and making a fool myself, you know? But I learned that those mistakes are just nothing. It's pre they're pretty trivial. Like no one really cares about it, you know? As long yeah. as you like keep on going and all that. So for me, who wasn't being able to like talk on camera at all live, and now I'm just doing it like almost every week, pretty chill. I still have, I'm still like nervous here and there, but like compared to like back then, I think I have gone so much. Like I have gone so far from like being nervous and can control the situation. Can it just like keep the show like, you know, go in without having to cut it off like because i did that before on facebook it's like oh my god i couldn't say anything else bye and then i do it again <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like pretty much just like i can just wing it you know i improvise all the time and i love without script like i can just go out a live stream for my audience and show them more of thailand and my country and also teach them some thai along the way yeah that's awesome. I really love that. I really love that yeah. that growth and being so nervous the first time to now it's you don't even have to to necessarily prepare a script if you just generally know what you're going to talk about and be able to have a really right. good show and conversation right. with your audience. That's that's amazing. Right. Yeah. Amazing. So what's been what's been the biggest adjustment? for you now having the business, building your YouTube audience and your coaching practice? What's been the biggest adjustment? Yeah, self-discipline is very important. Yeah? Which I didn't have at all before. Because <laughs> 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 um, I, I consider myself quite lazy when okay. I didn't have schedule planned for me. Or okay. when I, yeah, so like full-time jobs, were good back then to kind of discipline me and so when i you know came out of the corporate where i need to self-discipline myself i need to have self-discipline in order that i can in order that to like how can i put it? in order to you know complete each assignment or task that i plan for the day right but at first when i started youtube it was kind of all over the place i was working pretty much all the time like, I didn't rest enough, I didn't sleep enough, I didn't eat enough at all. And just pretty much just full on working. And I posted on YouTube three times uh, a week before, which is a lot. Yeah. Pretty much just like, you know, shoot, like film, following day, edit. And you do that like alternately. So that makes like seven days already. Um, yet I learned a lot to to kind of set aside times for myself for entertainment and to relax and recharge my battery too. At the same time, I think I actually work much harder when I'm on YouTube and do this by myself, even more than I give um, at any organizations in the past because I really enjoy doing it. And when yeah. I, when I like edit my videos, I usually go over so many times because I know that once the videos or Put out there i cannot change or fix it anymore and they're gonna be there forever yeah. they're gonna be part of my passive income yeah so um i learned to be less perfect i mean like because i also consider myself perfectionist and so that's why it takes a lot of time to edit video for me some people might you know spend less hours but for me like one one video especially if it's, if it's singing it could take up to like 50 hours. Wow. Yeah, because I sing to play piano and I film explaining the lyrics 
captioning, subtitle, you know, yeah. pretty much like it's, it's a lot of work. And, and I kind of stopped doing the music thing for a while now. So. <laughs> but, um, but it's really worth it because one video, uh, national, Thai national anthem, was watched by some professor in San Francisco. She's Thai. And that's why I'm going to San Francisco because she found me and she loved my national anthem video. And that's the reason that she's going to have me in her project. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. And you can see you're seeing the results of putting in that time and effort to produce such high quality content that you're now going out to San yeah. Francisco and have a collaboration. That's huge. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't expect anything out of it. Not like even with like YouTube too, like I didn't expect that it will pay off this soon. Cause I know at some point I might have an online program or course. Right. But when, when I like looking back, now, like, when I look back at it, I feel like, oh, yeah, I actually gave 100%. I didn't really hope or expect anything to happen anytime soon. I didn't even know if people are going to love my video or not. I just, I just did it because I love doing that. And I want to yeah. make sure that it's, like, coming out great and the best I could. And now it's how it's, you know, paying off. Just awesome. It's amazing. It's, like, every time people ask me, like, why are you doing, like, so much on YouTube? And I say, I just love doing it. And then yeah. when they asked me how I make money from it, I said, I don't know. But all I, all I know is when I enjoy doing something, money will come, come to me somehow. That's what I said to them. And they just laugh at me. For. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that, yeah, I, I love that. And it's been only, what, six, not even six months, full six months yeah. since you really not, started yeah. this? Yeah, exactly. Like, not even six months. So... <laughs> That's incredible. Like you've been able to grow your audience already yeah. and just like where you're, where you're headed, the trajectory, it's, it's been fun to watch. And like, I feel like you just started and like, it's, it's crazy. So what um, have you, so I want to go back. You, you've brought it up a couple times and I really love this, the um, kind of law of attraction and manifesting mm -hmm. income yeah. and, and things like that where does that come from? Have you always felt that way? Or is that something that you learned? Like, what, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I was uh, a negative person. I was pretty pessimistic back then. Uh, I grew up in a family where a lot of, like, you know, we had a lot of negativity being discussed in our family. And I'm pretty sure, like, my mom, my dad didn't really realize about this. Like, I, I actually talked to them about this, like, recently too you know how we can make our life better and stuff like that yeah by just being positive right um yeah and i think i i didn't blame them for that that's how they grew up and that's how we you know were raised in this society right um the thing is my mom i think my mom sent me a video about how negativity can actually you know makes us sick and stuff like that. Um, I think that was like maybe six, seven, eight years ago. I didn't okay. really think anything out of it. I just felt like how can positivity, you know, cure our health and stuff like that. Like, I didn't believe, I didn't buy that. And then later on, I think I saw some uh, maybe advertisements about manifestations, you know, like how you can make your life better and all that. And also this MLM business thing, you know, they usually try to get you into law of attraction too because law of attraction is like huge part of MLM, right? You know, you need to believe because it's not a, an easy business, you know. Yeah. You need, yeah, you need to persist a lot. You need to kind of like um, not give up. And so like, they use a lot of LOA, I call it LOA, Law of Attraction, yeah, LOA yeah. techniques and stuff like that. But for me, in the past, maybe starting, I started to get like really serious and read into it, like read a lot about Law of Attraction in 2017, maybe 16 or 17. And I still felt, I actually bought a course called Manifestation Miracle. I think it's a good program. It's only like $29. And it was fine. You know, like I, to the advice and all that but I still it didn't work you know it didn't work the way I wanted to, sure. to work for me 
And I kind of like look deeper into it and kind of like dug deeper, like what was it, you know, uh, that actually like stopped me from growing or from making money. Because for me, I feel like I have a lot of, you know, um, compared to, um, I don't know, but a lot of people usually say to me like, like Sarah, you know, you have a lot of skill, you have a lot going on, a lot to offer. Like they expect me, they expect that I'm making a lot of money. They they assume that I'm making a lot of money, but it's something that I always felt embarrassed to share or to talk about it because I didn't really make as much as money as people assume that I did. You know? Yeah. Because of the skill, like not so many people in Thailand can speak English the way I do, but at the same time, I feel like, what am I doing? Why didn't I make that much money yet? You know, I'm already like, let's say I was already like 32, 33, right? Um, and so like, I was kind of like beating myself off a little bit, like kind of be hard on myself. And I learned about law of attraction and it didn't work and it didn't work. Uh, and then I was kind of like chill for a little bit, like kind of let go and surrender to the universe. And then one day I got this job um, at an organization that paid me almost double from what I made at Fulbright Thailand. Wow. And then plus one month vacation. <laughs> paid, <laughs> nice. paid, voca- paid vacation too. So it's like, okay, it's kind of working for me, right? And then later I got fired. And I'm like, what's going on, you know? So I study more and more about law of attraction and manifestations. And until like recently, I just feel like, okay, this is it. Like I need to do something, uh, you know, to, to make more money because this is scary. Like I was pretty much like month to month, you know, in terms of yeah. income. And I needed to borrow some money from my dad too. And I kind of feel bad about it, even though my dad said it was okay. And so I told him like, look, let me finish this book. I'm going to, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to sell it. And it's going to be an international hit. I knew it. Like I had a feeling. And then um, I was going to do that. And then I was kind of dreaming a lot about going to San Francisco. And I actually been telling people that I was going since last year. And I picked San Francisco because that's like one of the destinations that I always want to go. I don't know, sure. for some reason, I, I, I have been telling people I'm going to San Francisco, I'm going to San Francisco, like kind of fighting my way to go, either with university visits or whatever, because I was part of the educational consultancy for a bit with my friends. And I was like, I don't know, somehow I'm going to go to San Francisco, either through, you know, university visits, either through agency or whatever. And yeah, and then one day, we like, a month ago, I just got a phone call from this professor and she asked me what I was doing, like for, for a living. And I said, I didn't do much. <laughs> I just <laughs> spent a lot of time on YouTube and tried to finish this novel. And then she's like, yeah, you know, how about you do this? Like, so she, you know, extended an invite to, to join her project, right? Yeah. So that's, that's how awesome. it's like all started. And I was like, I was like, screaming with joy because like oh my god like really and it was really fascinating because she said she would like she was going to fund everything so she's paying for my flight and i wouldn't have to pay anything when i'm in san francisco it's like how could it happen like i didn't even have means to do it (laughs) at all Yeah. yeah and and she is very famous in this field like Thai teaching and learning and basically she saw the potential in me and she believed in me and yeah so I mean for me I knew that at some point maybe like 10 years along the road um, I would be famous right but to be able to join her project like in this short period of time actually gives me a lot of opportunity to grow and to get yeah. more and more exposure in a very like maybe like two or three months after we finished you know project together so that's why i think these things cannot be coincident it's just me believing myself more and more every year you know it's like 
when you have like issues to work on, you kind of have to dig deep into them and kind of like work on them first, right? And yeah. all I think it all boils out to self love too, because I feel like I wasn't worth it. I wasn't, I wasn't enough, right? I'm not talking about relationship stuff, but more like I felt that I didn't deserve to make money. I didn't deserve those, you know. I don't. I didn't deserve money. I didn't deserve to be able to live off um, my fortune, right? Because I feel like okay. Maybe I'm good. Maybe I'm like you know super good, but at the end of the day, this is how much I made, and I let that define who I am or how much I can bring to the table, and it's just wrong, right? So um, I think I start to kind of work on my issues and my uh, insecurity with money, and that's when it started to like pick up and get better. Yeah. That that's really important. That you need to ask yourself first. Like, why do you think you don't deserve to make that much money? Why do you think you cannot make that much money? Is it because yeah. you? Is it because you don't believe in yourself? Is it because um, you think money is hard to make? It has to involve hard work only. You cannot enjoy doing it. You cannot enjoy making money. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like those questions. I ask myself and try to kind of like work on them and like solve them bit by bit. Mm -hmm. And then I manifested a trip to San Francisco and yeah, the best partner I could <laughs> ever ask for. So yeah. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. I love that story and like the, the focus on self first and how you were really focused on figuring out how to get sent to San Francisco. And even before you had it figured out, you were telling people, I'm going to San Francisco, I'm going to San Francisco and being able to manifest that. That's, that's really incredible. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So what, and, and this isn't, this is, this is a conversation that I, that I, that I think will be really interesting, especially since you, I mean, you grew up in the Thai culture, which is, mm -hmm. is, is different than the U S there's obviously similarities yeah. in certain respects, yeah. But some of the same things that you described are very similar to the U.S. about a lot of people not feeling like they're, they're, you know, they're only worth the, the dollar amount on their paycheck or because they didn't go to a fancy, you know, the fanciest college or an Ivy League school that they're not worth, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So can you tell me yeah. a little bit about like what it's, what it's like in the Thai culture when it comes to money and finances and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, for us, money is a way to climb the social status and ladder. Okay. Um, is that your question? How is yeah. reference to Thai culture, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think, honestly, I feel Thai people don't really care so much about saving up, which... I mean, we're supposed to, but they don't really care. I see a lot of people spend money and are afraid of like asking for the price before they pay or something like that. I'm not a kind of person who will be like, embarrassed asking how much I have to pay before ordering. Sometimes they don't have the price on the menu or sometimes they don't really know what the yeah. price is. So I'm not really like embarrassed. I don't feel embarrassed or afraid to ask, right? But Thai people about this kind of thing, we have this concept called face losing. And so like sometimes Thai people wouldn't dare to ask or be honest about, hey, you know, how much money I have to pay? Can you tell me more? They would just whatever, pay for it and then think about it later or regret later. Okay. Um, about this money thing and saving up, I think not so many people, um, how can I put it? I think some people, probably like think about saving up and stuff like that but mostly millennials in thailand they they're pretty comfortable you know living with family and all that and i've seen a lot of them not really caring so much about saving up for the future um mm -hmm. i think for you guys right when you hit maybe 18 or 20 you already move out yeah yeah or, college or after college yeah, usually most people want to move out move on their own it's like a yeah yeah i think 
in like not american culture you guys are trained somehow to be responsible for your own living um at some point right but in thai culture because you're from individual individualistic you know culture and yeah. that's different from us because we are collective as a culture mm -hmm. where we help each other like family helps each other and that's why uh sometimes the kids still you know leaving off parents money and stay with them yeah um i think we i don't know i feel i feel that non-american culture kind of train you guys to be a little more responsible for your life because for us it's like at the end of the day our parents will still support us I'm not sure about you guys but <laughs> like yeah. yeah i think it depends on the family but <laughs> yeah. yeah it depends on the family right um, <coughs> um terms yeah. of money yeah money yeah i think i think it's pretty for me what i seen the difference when i was living in canada what i seen is like people are not afraid to ask for the price they have to pay they have to make clear first or they would be asking about discounts and all that right but for us thai people i don't know i feel like we we don't talk much about money and stuff. Okay. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Did, yeah, I, did, did I answer your question? You did. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to explore yeah, the, yeah, the differences because, you know, for, yeah. for the most part, I mean, I, I think every, every guest that I've had has been, has been either from the U S or from the UK or somewhere, you know, like that, that has similar, um, similar concepts around, money and things like that that mm. we've explored but you know having lived in thailand for a year i understand that there's it's it's very, it's different right like there's a lot of more communal as you yeah. mentioned and the family is is much more important to to give back to to support to support others yeah whereas yeah. in the u.s for the most part it's very much like you know parents and children and that's kind of it maybe grandparents but it's yeah. just it's different so i'm just curious because there's there's definitely you know i don't i don't know i I've, i didn't grow up in the thai culture and don't don't know what that mm. what that's like yeah and it's like it's very interesting for the concept of dowry too because you guys don't have that in your culture and yeah. it's like it's being controversial and i already covered this topic in my uh, one of the videos and yeah i totally understand about how some of you might see it as like buying women as a commodity and all that, right? But like, because the money for us is not, it's not just money. Money shows stability of a person. And as, uh, as I mentioned earlier about how money can make someone climb up their so, you know, social ladder and status, yeah. right? And so, yeah, like, you know, like... <laughs> It's like pretty, pretty. It's pretty big topic, and um, I was, I was proud to actually be able to explain that concept to the world. Um, you know, some people still disagree and all that, and I totally understand. And actually, had a solution myself for my future husband. <laughs> yeah. Um, I already, yeah, because like you know, like my my parents actually, they don't sweat over dowry much. They, and they even said, if, you know, we're not going to have dowry at all, it's totally fine. But I mean, I know that deep down they want, they want some dowry to be presented at the ceremony, right? But I know for a fact that uh, they will return the dowry to us as a money gift to start, you know, a family, which is a really nice thing. I think oh, that's a great concept to, to have, right? Like, okay you you know give some money to us and we keep it for a day maybe because <laughs> usually the engagement engagement ceremony is like a day before wedding wedding day right so and then they return it <clears throat> to the couple to start a life together i think that's, that's a nice concept i think yeah. some a lot of people from north america or like europe or wherever um some of them don't really know that most families now you know uh we return the money to the couple yeah. interesting yeah i know it's that's that's definitely something that's unique and um an interesting interesting concept because yeah that's it's not common not common here so yeah interesting interesting 
So how would you, how would you describe your relationship with money? We talked a little bit about, about it, but if you were to, to describe yeah, yeah. it, how would you, how would you describe that? Um, I'm still working on the field of, you know, spending money because according to manifestations <laughs> stuff, we're not supposed to feel that we wasting money when we spend money or feel like sure. we're losing money. Right. Cause if we feel like when we feel that kind of fear, then it will bring us more of the fear of losing money and, and it, we're going to end up spending more and more money and not making money. Right. So the way I see money is money comes and goes. Um, it doesn't stay and it doesn't leave me either. It's like you get mm. it and you spend. Like it's not like you losing or you wasting your money. When you spend money, it's like you get something in return. For example, you pay uh, for electricity. You get electricity, you get water, you get hydro, you get to live comfortably in your home, right? So that, that's how I see it. So nowadays, I'm still trying to work on um, my, you know, insecurity and money. Like I'm not saying it's like completely 100% like heal yet. Um, it's like I feel I still have some fear about spending money still, you know. And also, yeah. I think it's very important to be generous. As in like, when I go out, when I go to a restaurant, I tip people. When I go for a massage, I tip people. Before, I didn't tip them because I feel like I don't want to spend. You know, I don't want to give away. Like, why would I have to give another 50 or 100 baht? You know, I was already making less, right? Yeah. But once, once I start to be generous and tip more, money comes to me somehow like more money because I didn't show I didn't act like I'm losing anything because I I feel you know um, I enjoy the gift of giving to other people and when sure. I do that money loves me more money <laughs> comes back to me tenfold you know yeah so that that's how I believe right every time I feel like oh my god I don't want to tip so much no no Sarah no 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 you can tip so much because money can come to me all the time from unexpected sources, you know, like that's what I believe. And so my yeah. relationship with money is getting better and I'm still working on it. And every time that I feel about spending money, wasting money or losing my money on anything, I would tell myself like, hey, look, you know, um, look back in the past, how I overcame it, how I manifested the trip, how I manifested this amount of money. If I can do it in the past, if it already happened, why wouldn't it happen again, right? Yeah. It can keep happening and happening. Yeah. So it's not really about being super positive about money, but it's mm -hmm. more like I change my um, perception about how money comes and goes. I mean, there's, there, of course, there's going to be some moment that I feel like, oh, my God, I shouldn't have spent that. And it's totally fine. And that's the thing about law of attraction and manifestation, too. Uh, it is when you, you know, being so hard on yourself or when you beat yourself up because you feel negative about that. Yeah. It's going to add more of negativity, right? Because sure. when we feel negative about ourselves, we should tell ourselves it's okay. It's okay to feel moody. It's okay to feel angry today. It's okay yeah. to feel negative today. But it doesn't mean that, you know, all negativity will come back to our life. It doesn't work that way. As long as we pull ourselves back on track yeah. and be positive again. Yeah. So that's what I believe. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And uh, you know, the, the fact that like you've, you've, you're more conscious of it, but at the same time, less attached to money, right? You let it flow in and out, you yeah. know, willing tipping and being generous and, in, and in, in your everyday life and being open to having, you know, income or opportunities come from other sources like San Francisco. So I really like that. It sounds like it's, yeah, you've, 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 you're onto something, I think. <laughs> oh, one more thing about money though. Um, Cause I charge a lot for my private lessons. And before I used to feel, I used to feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause I charge so high and I feel like, I feel like as a teacher, you shouldn't charge 
so much, you know, like teaching is something that shouldn't be involving a lot of money. And that's something that I changed because I need to tell myself it's okay. As much as I teach for free on YouTube, I deserve to earn a lot of money from private lessons too. So yeah. if you feel bad or guilty about making money, you're going to stop making a lot of money. So you have to change that. That's what I yeah. believe. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's also about knowing yeah. the value of what you're, of what you're doing, right? Like when you're yeah. doing coaching, it's, it's, it's different. One-on-one -on -one coaching is yeah. very different than, you know, YouTube yeah. and creating yeah. content. So I love that, that yeah, you know exactly. your worth yeah. and are willing to charge a premium for your time and your expertise. Yeah. 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 Cool. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about future Sarah. When you think about your dreams, goals, aspirations, what are you, what are your goals? What are your mm -hmm. dreams and what are you really going after? What does future Sarah look like? I want to live either in Canada or the States six months and I will live in Thailand for six months. Okay. Um, possibly, possibly, probably like um, one month in Bangkok, one month in Canada, like back and forth like that. Because if I'm going to be still on YouTube, I also need to make content about Thailand. And it wouldn't be a good idea for me to stay in Canada or the States for six months, you mm -hmm. know? And unless okay. I can do like a bunch of videos for six months, but I love live streaming and I love anything that's live. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, my plan would be like travel back and forth between the States and Canada, maybe every two months or three, I don't know yet, but uh, I have a very positive feelings about this project, like an online course with the professor. Sure. And so uh, we're talking about the amount of money that we could make. And after that, I could be anywhere in the world because I mostly teach online anyways. Like I use Zoom, Zoom as well, mm -hmm. which is my students. And I'm hoping to expand my class to like multiple students, like up to 100, right? We can do that on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, if I can do that, I can, make, I can make quite good money as well. And, you know, on top of the online course, that's going to give me passive income. Yeah, so my plan is to travel the world because I haven't done that at all. In the past, I was working my ass off all the time. And um, I, when I was in Canada, I didn't even get to ski because I didn't have money or time yeah. to do it. It's expensive. More, like, more off expensive. money thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't get to explore um, Canada much even though I was already there. Yeah. And so I kind of regret, but at the same time, it's like, all right, I can do anytime I want. No need to regret about it. Um, yeah, so it's my plan. I want to travel the world. I want to explore other cultures. I want to talk to people of different cultures. And yeah, it's, I love hearing stories from people, you know, like they're inspiring me as well. And I love to inspire, inspire students here in Thailand. I love, I love to... Yeah, I love to tell them, don't give up. Everything is part of learning curve, you know. And one day, um, I really want to be, like, the trainer of trainers, like, coaching teachers, tutors, uh, you know, like, create a better, greater impact in the community because teaching is my passion, and I know I cannot do that alone, you know. So I really yeah. want to, like, you know, maybe establish a foundation or community and, you know, encourage people to volunteer. Because at the end of the day, our, my absolute goal is to volunteer full time. Like, okay. and people said, like, yeah. yeah, I did that before. I actually did that, but not full time with my ministries. Um, I, I am I'm a Christian. I was super religious before, so I was involved in a lot of ministries mm -hmm. before. And I taught a lot for free. And then I asked myself, like, why am I doing this? I need to take care of myself first, <laughs> right? And so right now I'm doing it. But still, I mean, I still volunteer here and there. And, yeah, I, I always tell people, don't wait for volunteer. Like, you don't need to be super ready financially before you can volunteer. But at the same time, don't do that to torture yourself. <laughs> Make sure you take care of yourself and then you can volunteer for fun, for passion or whatever, but make sure that you're financially stable as well. 
don't volunteer yeah. for everything. Yeah. No, I, I so, love that. Yeah, you can still give back, yeah. but yeah, make sure you take care of yourself too. That's important. Yeah, you have to take care of yourself, your family, and you got to do what you got to do first. You know, you can help it by bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So traveling and that that's awesome. Is there anywhere specific that you want to go? You went to Canada. Everywhere. And explore, <laughs> I, want, yeah. I want to ski so much. I want to ski. <laughs> okay. I want to snowboard. And I love, I love hiking. I love hiking. I love nature. I love mountains. I love beaches. So I cannot really be in Bangkok like forever because <laughs> it's boring here for me. You know, there's a lot of traffic. Uh, the nightlife's good, but I mean, I'm kind of too old for that now. <laughs> no, you're good. But I got you. Yeah, you want to do other things. You want to be in the outdoors. And uh, it's, yes. it's hard to do that I in a big city. I love outdoor activities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Totally. Cool. So what advice would you give to someone who wanted to follow in your footsteps? Mm, I think each people has, you know, their own approach okay. and techniques, right? How to, um, you know, work around, get around that. But my piece of advice would be explore all of your options what do you like doing the most what do you enjoy doing and if you enjoy doing something just do it don't wait don't procrastinate because i was a kind of person who procrastinates a lot and i never got anything done or started anything i'm also a perfectionist so when i started doing youtube it was really hard for me to finish one video and it was because of that that's why it stopped me from being on YouTube maybe a month earlier because I feel like I was scared of not being not perfect, you know? Yeah. And so my, yeah, I usually tell people like, if you want to do something, don't wait until you need to make it perfect or you know for sure it's going to be perfect. Just do it. Yeah. yeah. That's why my very first videos were like without <coughs> music, nothing, you know, yeah, stuff you like just... that. So you got to do it. you got to start somehow, right? And people are like, okay, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. It's like, no, just do it now. It doesn't have to be perfect. And yeah. when you learn from your mistakes, it's like, it's priceless because it's your own mistakes that people cannot teach you. It's your own lessons. And everyone has their own unique lessons, right? So, I mean, we can learn from other people, but wouldn't be better if we can learn from ourselves and don't yeah. be so hard on yourself just gradually pacing uh with your own you know tempo um and yeah like i think learning by yourself and listening to people who are successful at the things that you want to achieve that's probably like yeah it's probably, yeah, that's not advice for me. Like, learn from them. At the same time, you need to kind of adapt those techniques and experiences from them because every of us has different, unique, like, qualities and traits yeah. and experience. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's great advice. And yeah, I think you hit on some really important things around, you know, just, just do it. Like, why wait? And you've just got to start. And I love you know, pay attention to the people that are doing it well and take, follow their footsteps, see what they do. And, and um, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And also like about money thing, I totally understand when you first start, um, you might be a little scared of, you know, so you don't need to quit a full-time job or maybe you can, you know, find a way to make like a stable income and do it as a side project or something. Right. But for me, yeah. I had no choice. So I just started it. And yeah. But the thing is, when you enjoy doing something, money will come your way. And if you're worried about how money is going to come, then you're going to spend time worrying about how money is going to come instead of <laughs> put it, giving it all to what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I never worry about money for like three, four months. I was like, whatever. Okay, I'm broke. I acknowledge that but I don't care. Like, just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. No, but it takes sense. time. It takes time and practice to, to reach that point. And everyone has different timelines. 
So you need to don't be so hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up just because you fail sometimes. Um, keep going, you know, keep going and yeah. love yourself a lot. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's important. See yes. your worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I've got a few more wrap up questions and yeah, what, definitely. What, um, what's the best investment you've ever made? Best investment? Hmm. My time for YouTube, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You mean you're talking about money or time? You it's, it's however time, you right? interpret it. Yeah. And however you interpret it. Um, I would say most of the responses say, from guests are, yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I would say YouTube because it's probably the first project that I ever, well, completed so far because um, I'm a kind of person who loves initiating projects and I could never, like, finish any of them. Okay. Like, that's why it, it's, you know, it's good for me to head a department. I can come up with projects and all that. I can just let people do them, you know, <laughs> and like that. Yeah. And so YouTube is actually the very first project that I got to keep on going and treat it like my own business. Because um, I did cons consultancy last year too, but it didn't work well. And I just kind of like gave up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I just had these ideas a lot, you know, work on website. I know the basics of, you know, building a website too. So I built a lot of websites last year, but I just dished them all. Right now I'm just like, just YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So getting you. YouTube, that's why I said it's good to explore your options. You have to like, you have to learn about them and get to experience all of them first before you're making, you know, a decision, which yeah. way or which you know, direction you're going to go for. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I think YouTube is the, best investment because it's how because that video that one video um you know was watched by someone and she was a person who gonna, who's gonna change my life so yeah that's awesome i love that i love that yeah. answer yeah what would you say the best and the worst part of entrepreneurship is what are the yeah best and worst best and worst Yes. Best is you are your own boss. You get to design your own life. You get to design your own work, content. Um, you get to say that this is yours, right? Because when I, when I worked for, when I was doing, you know, M, an MLM business back mm -hmm. then, I, you know, I was told by my upline people that, okay, so, like treat like treat it like your own business, but I didn't feel that it was, you know. But when you get to do something of your own for real, it's like you kind of you proud of it. You really, really proud of it that this is like your baby. You cannot just leave it, you know. So like that's the best part. I think you you learn so much from it. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, and the worst part is the insecurity. Instability about uh, finances. Okay. Um, and if you're a lazy person, it's kind of hard to kind of like force yourself to, to get through the day and to get some work done. Yeah. And that was me before. But I learned from it anyways. Yeah, the worst part would be, you know, you don't get this comfortableness of getting money at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, and maybe like you need to set aside some benefits for like some money for medical benefits too, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you don't work full time, you need to make sure that you're, you know, you have some money for that as well or side up with the program that the government offers. So it's totally different because when I was in Fulbright, I got like a premium grant <laughs> medical benefit, right? Yeah. I could just stay at any private hospitals, you know. So, yeah. So yeah, that's that's the worst part, I think. But once um, you get to the point where you make a lot of money and like super secure financially, then you'll be fine. This yeah. worst part gonna be the best part. Yeah. Nice. I love that. I love that. Yeah. What is the dumbest money mistake you've made? 
<laughs> That's a good question. Um, well, kind of dumb, maybe. Not sure if it's the dumbest. So I was investing in um, affiliate marketing program. Okay. okay? Um, I think the company is in Canada, Victoria, Canada. And I was with them for like three years. So I paid $299 every year. I was hoping to get some money from Amazon and being uh, affiliate, right? You know what mm -hmm. it is, right? Affiliate yeah, marketing. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but like I was lazy and I didn't treat it like as my own business and I was like kind of like oh whatever like you know so I kept I kept paying that amount that fee for like three years but I didn't do anything but I learned the uh, skills for building websites and that's about it and I guess some free photos gotcha. from, <laughs> from yeah yeah so basically that that's about it but I decided I decided to just like end it last year just like two months ago yeah. So basically, I, I didn't want to pay anymore because I kept telling myself, I'm going to pay for another year and I, I, this time I'm going to keep doing it, right? And I failed for two years straight. So I'm like, all right. So so I paid for three years in total because like, I remember the, the end of the first year, I was like, all right, are you going to do this, Sarah? Okay, let's do it. So I pay again. And then at the end of the second year, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it again. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so third year, I'm like, okay, this is it. Yeah, and also I have I already have YouTube, so yeah, you got time. Exactly, that makes sense. That makes sense. So that's like the worst investment. So I pay like how much? Almost a uh, hundred, a thousand dollars for nothing. Not really nothing. I I got something out of it, but like you know, it's no. like part of the education. I would say. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You got a positive spin on it. You get something out of it. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's part of learning curve, always. Everything I see is part of learning curve. And, la and like I said earlier about money, right? If I see that's something that I'm, you know, have wasted, then it's not going to come back to me. So yeah. right now I'm just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Yep. You, you, you learned that. You learned from that mistake. Now time to focus on YouTube mm -hmm. and everything else that you're doing. So cool. Exactly. What would you say? Yeah is the most frivolous way you've spent money in the past? Uh, yeah, for like cosmetic stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for, um, for like filler, like Botox. <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay. I mean, I probably, yeah. I probably needed, needed it, but like I didn't have to do that all at once. I can choose either like Botox first and maybe filler later, but like <laughs> I kind of like jump into like this, you know, paying for all of that. I mean, the sales girl was pretty good. <laughs> <you know? laughs> gotcha. Um, That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, I, I usually, I usually like, um, couldn't resist. I, I can't resist the temptation, stuff like this. It's about like beauty appearance, you know. Yeah. Um, I usually just give in, like honestly. But every time I'd be like, no, I, I usually just keep my credit card at home so that I cannot use it. That's smart. That's smart. I like that. <laughs> like the, le the latest one that I actually like given was the procedure for my scar because I always have this problem with scar. And I think the salesperson, he was so kind. Uh, he was like really cheerful. And I told him, I said, I didn't have budget, a budget for it. And when he said, you can do an installment for 10 months, like zero interest. And I was like, all right, <laughs> do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the installment plan is really something that gets me a lot, like all the time, always. Cause like if they do like one, you know, lump sum of money, I probably couldn't afford it, right? But yeah. if they offer me like 10 months, you know, installment without any interest at all, I'd be like, okay, it's only <laughs> like $30 a month. Nice, That's yeah. dangerous because it, it could, I have to tell myself it could add up too. So I need to be, I need to be careful. But at the yeah. same time, I kind of enjoy, you know, the benefits of like being a little yeah. prettier. <laughs> No, you're fine. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> but I got you. Yeah. yeah. Appearance, beauty, and yeah. how you feel is obviously really important. Yeah. So. It's kind of important for me because I'm on YouTube, but yeah. I try not to overdo it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. 
Yeah, cool. that's that's also important to still look like me. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So this next question, I'm going to switch a little bit. It's what's the biggest、yeah. challenge facing everyday Americans? But rather than Americans, what's the biggest challenge facing everyday Thais when it comes to finances? When it comes to finances? Yeah. When you think about like yeah finances specifically for for you know the average Thai person. Oh, you mean like in general? In general, yeah. Like biggest challenge facing.、Mm. Regular, regular ties. I think, I think the cost of living here is so high compared to the minimum wages or wages in general. It's like there's a、okay. big gap. I think like because like when you go to a restaurant, like I don't know, like one dish costs you like almost ten dollars now in Thailand,、mm-hmm. and it's not even like a nice restaurant, just like normal restaurant. And I think the average people make here it's about like. Twenty grand by a month, which is like six hundred dollars or something. Okay,、right? yeah. Which is pretty. It's just which is pretty interesting. Like, how can you survive? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah, and that's why people tend to have like second, third job, and this MLM business, you know, doing so well. To not really like lure, you know, quoted people in, but like they would offer this dream. Job or dream opportunity and all that, right? Yeah.、Um, I I know that a lot of people like ask me to like what kind of second job they should do and all that. You know,、um, that's just like unfortunate that like we have this huge gap between you know people who are so rich and others who's like just so poor. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. tough. Yeah, and that's. It's it's interesting that you say that because obviously you know from an American lens you come in and you're like this is you know the perception from foreigners is wow Thailand is very inexpensive、yeah. because they're comparing it to your own cost of living but you don't think about right, right. what what the cost of living is for everyday you know everyday Thai people and then what the yeah, incomes yeah. are and that's. That's really interesting. So I'm glad that you brought that up because it's something that draws a lot of tourists to Thailand. Yeah. But is、yeah. actually a problem in the country, which is really, really interesting. Right, right. But if you live in like countryside or rural area, shouldn't be much problem though, because like、okay. I'm talking about like pretty much Bangkok or in the city. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then final question. If you were gonna go back and give some advice to your thirteen-year-old self, what advice would you give thirteen-year-old Sarah? Hmm. Wow, it's a tough, tough question. Thirteen-year-old. Um. Well, I felt honestly, I love anything about finance and marketing and stuff. Thirteen years old. I would probably like.、Hmm, I don't know. It's a tough question. Thirty, maybe not finance stuff. Because like I always regret not taking like finance as my major, you know. Because I actually like enjoy making money and all that. Yeah, yeah. But like, if if it were thirteen years old back then, and probably something else, maybe it about being negative. I think. Okay. About um. How I didn't love myself enough, and I also went through、um, afraid of having bulimia. Okay, okay. so I, for a little while, so I had bulimia from like that around that age, like thirteen, fourteen, until twenty, twenty five, twenty six. Wow!、Yeah. But it was like not not severe. Like I didn't make myself throw up or anything, but just like. Went through the phases of like binging and purging, right? Like I would、okay. feel guilty about having food and eating and all that. So if I could turn back time, or like give advice to myself back then, I'd be like, "It's okay to be fat." <laughs> <laughs> okay.、Um, no, it's because it's like, yeah, like it's okay to be fat. It's okay to to not look like what the media. Portrays that you're supposed to look like, you know.、Yeah. Um, you need to be yourself. You need to be confident. 
and then look how far I've come. You know, like I'm not fat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't like, worry yeah because like before yeah don't worry because like i was so i was sorry about eating and now i eat like a cow like, i eat a lot i eat like a horse i can eat a horse i can eat everything <laughs> and i'm still in shape because uh thanks to my uh, metabolism right it's it's getting better even though i'm older but i work out and i have muscles so back then i was just scared of eating anything and yeah. now I don't have time to eat anything and I don't care <laughs> so much about food anymore. Yeah. I think when you care so much about something, you kind of obsess with it. Yeah. And you kind of like, yeah, you kind of, when you obsess with it, you just don't do well with it. But when you chill and relax, you know, everything's going to fall into place. Yeah. Absolutely. So that'll be my advice for my 13 years old. Back then. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. Cool. Well, Sarah, that's, that's all I've got. Anything else you want to share with the audience? I think that's it. You asked me everything. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, where can people find more about you, follow you? Uh, how, do they, how do they connect with you and uh, support what you're doing? Um, so my YouTube channel is called Thai with Sarah, T-H-A-I with, and my name's Sarah, S-A-R-A-H. And you can follow my Instagram too. It's also Thai with Sarah. Uh, I'm also on TikTok. Nice. <laughs> it's Thai with Sarah as well. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, everything is Thai with Sarah. And I'm building, I'm building my own website. It's called ThaiWithSarah.com. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I love yeah, it. That's, I love that's it. my brand. That's my brand. I'm actually on Twitter too, but I haven't posted anything. And it's also Thai with Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there you go. You got it. You're on, on all the major platforms, Ty with yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Well, awesome. And LinkedIn also, Ty with Sarah. Perfect. There you go. That yeah, cover them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Sarah, so, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm glad we could uh, we could make this work. And thank you for, for staying up late. I know it's late in, in Bangkok right now. So I really, uh, yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah, it's okay. It. I'm a night owl. Yeah. <laughs> Really, really, really glad to be here with you as well. Thank you for having me. All right. So that concludes today's episode of the Silicon Alley podcast. As you can tell, Sarah is doing a lot of really great things and been able to build an audience super quickly on YouTube and is already seeing a ton of success between that and her coaching business where she charges top dollar to work with her. And um, as you can tell, she's really focused on the mindset and manifestation specifically and seeing what it is she wants to achieve and then figuring out a way to create that. So I really like Sarah's perspective and loved the juxtaposition as well as the similarities that exist in entrepreneurship, whether you are uh, in Thailand or in the US or somewhere else overseas. So I hope that you enjoyed today's episode of the Silicon Alley podcast. Please share the podcast with others that you think would get value. And uh, that concludes our episode. So I'm William Glass, CEO and co-founder of Ostrich, getostrich.com. Sign up for the beta. And of course, your host of the Silicon Alley podcast. Thank you so much for being a listener. It means the world to me. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day.